Okay, we have triumphantly returned once again on the Torch News Roundup, after a brief vacation to recharge the old batteries. If you haven't already, check out my live broadcast. I typically do them on Saturday nights, around 8 o'clock Eastern Standard Time, so be sure to check those out. Alright, let's waste no more time and get right into our 49th edition of the Torch News Roundup. First, gonna take a look at a couple trailers. A couple trailers. First one is the CW's Black Lightning trailer. It opens in 2005, where a Black Lightning is looking pretty worse for wear in a tub covered in injuries. His wife tells him he's been fighting the 100 for years. Now, I don't think this has anything to do with the show The 100, also on CW. I don't know if that's from the comics. I don't know a whole lot about the character, but I'm thinking that's the series' villains. So Black Lightning's wife convinces him to retire for the sake of the kids, and Black Lightning agrees. Flash forward to 2017, and we see Jefferson has become a school principal, while the 100 continue their violent ways. Eventually, Jefferson decides to take a stand and reemerge as the legendary crime fighter Black Lightning. Now, Black Lightning's costume looks awesome in action. I'll have to admit, I was a bit concerned about the action scene, since we obviously have a middle-aged guy in a cumbersome costume here, but it looks to me to be very convincing. Jefferson's daughters have a big part in the trailer, one of them narrates it, and apparently we won't have to wait too long to see their powers emerge. I think the concept looks like, what would it be like if Joe West were a superhero? Jefferson gives off a bit of that Joe West vibe here, no pun intended, with his being sort of a big teddy bear and overprotective with his kids, but all business when fighting crime. My main concern for the show is the lack of supervillains in the trailer. A hero is only as good as his villains. And it looks like here... Lightning's villains are mainly going to be thugs and run-of-the-mill crooks. Hopefully there's someone waiting in the wings to give him a challenge, otherwise his beating up punks could get old rather quickly. Also, unfortunately, we have confirmation that Black Lightning will not be a part of the Arrowverse, and that it exists independently. I think this is a big mistake, because if the show flounders, it's not going to get the support from crossover episodes, making it more susceptible to cancellation. Also, we're obviously missing out on how cool it'll be to have another Elder Statesman superhero in the fold. The main problem with the crossover is the show is shot in Atlanta, with the other shows being shot in Vancouver. If you'll remember, Supergirl had the same difficulty last year shooting in L.A. before joining the rest of the shows in Vancouver the following year. Will Black Lightning eventually follow suit? Only time will tell. And we got a trailer for The Gifted, Fox's next X-Men-inspired show starring Amy Acker. So, in a nutshell, the story is about this guy who helps the government capture mutants for the good of mankind. But when his son, Andy, begins displaying mutant powers of his own, he, his wife, and family take it on the lam and try to escape this clandestine organization. Andy gets taken under the wing of his sister, who is also secretly a mutant, with a greater amount of control over her powers. As the family is pursued by small little spider-like sentinels, they run into a few C-list X-Men in Blink and Thunderbird, with Polaris also playing a part as a prisoner whom they try to find. Now, the X-Men and the Brotherhood get name-dropped, but this show is pretty far removed from any incarnation of the feature film's X-Men, despite the show being heralded by Brian Singer. Rumor has it the show is set post Days of Future Past ending and pre-Logan. There's also been a lot of speculation as to whether or not some of the feature film's cast would appear, such as Rogue, Storm, or Cyclops. But I wouldn't get your hopes up just yet. The show is more in the mold of a family drama, so I frankly don't think an X-Men reunion is their top priority. That, coupled with the fact that it's on Fox, who traditionally don't let their shows flounder for too long, doesn't give me the hugest boost of confidence. But to me, I don't know. The show seems kind of underwhelming, to be honest. I'll give it a chance, of course, but if it's set in the X-Men universe, it won't be long until folks are clamoring for some real X-Men A-listers. And will this show be able to provide them? It's doubtful. But we'll see. Alright, so we have some news about the shifting schedules of some of our favorite shows next season, so let's check that out. First off, ABC will air The Inhumans on Friday nights, with Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. being held off as a mid-season show which would probably begin in January, much like Agent Carter did. Now, The Inhumans' first season is only eight episodes, and they're giving Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. a full 22-episode season, and they're expected to take The Inhumans' place on Friday nights when Inhumans is finished. Now, Friday night is generally considered the death slot, 
It's where you send shows to die. But Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. has beat the odds before, and I'm personally feeling pretty confident that the show can survive on Friday nights, given the strong showing that this season had. Over on CW, Arrow moves over to Thursdays at 9 p.m. next season for a new night in time, trading places with CW's Riverdale, which will air Wednesdays at 8 p.m. And we have news that Tom Hardy has traded one thinly drawn 90s uber villain for another. <clears throat> having played Bane in The Dark Knight Rises, to play Venom in Sony's upcoming solo movie. Now Hardy's an accomplished actor, and I have no doubt he'll do fine in the role, but I still have misgivings about this project. For one thing, it's Sony after all. Need I say more? But, moreover, Venom is a character too closely tied to Spider-Man to do his origin justice without involving the wall crawler. It's also rumored to be yet another R-rated extravaganza. The craze that Hollywood's in now, the R-rated superhero film. Which would be quite the tonal clash, should Tom Holland's Spider-Man eventually appear, either here or in a sequel. But at any rate, the Spider-Man 3 bashers will probably be quieted somewhat now that they get their buff Eddie Brock. And finally, as if I needed any excuse to show an Amber Heard picture, we have this first photo of Amber as Mira snapped on the Aquaman set. And doth my eyes deceive me, or is that actually vibrant color in the photo? Ye cats! An actual shade of green that actually looks like the comics in a DC movie! Who'd have thunk it? And her hair is the right color, too. She just looks great here. So tell me what you think about Mira's costume, or Tom Hardy as Venom, or any of the trailers we talked about today in the comments below. Be sure to check out my comic, The Adventures of Bullets Bourbon, in the link in the description below, as well as find me on Twitter. And until we meet again, this is Johnny Torch reminding you, keep the flame burning brightly, and I'll be with you again real soon.